In this video, I am going to demonstrate how to create this effect where a web page is flowing out of a monitor. Before I begin, I would like to let you know that this is not my original idea. I stumbled upon this on Pinterest where other artists have already created this kind of effect. Therefore, with enough inspiration from other people's work on Pinterest, I was able to take it from there. I prepared this scene for demonstration. First step is to go to the outliner and create a new collection. Rename it to Display Web Page. When the collection is selected, go to Add Curve, then Bezier. Switch to Front Orthographic View. Rotate the curve along the Y axis about 90 degrees. Switch to Right Orthographic View. Tab into Edit Mode of the curve and adjust by scaling it down this way. Move the points this way and continue to adjust. Select this point, rotate it in order to become parallel with the surface of the monitor. Hold down Shift key for finer adjustments while rotating. Select this other point and rotate it as well. If you go to Overlays then enable Wireframe, you can see the edges on the 3D objects in the scene. The visible edges on the monitor are going to help in identifying where to adjust the points of the Bezier curve. In order to adjust the Bezier curve properly, change the transformation orientation from global to normal. Select this point and move it to this edge. Select this other point and move it to this top edge. Switch to right orthographic view, then change transformation orientation back to global. Extrude this point this way. Rotate and scale down its handles. Extrude again, scale it, and move it this way. At this point, you can create any shape you want. The goal here is to achieve a curve that you think is going to be interesting at the end. Select this top point, Shift S, then cursor to selected. Tab into Object Mode. Go to Object, Set Origin, then Origin to 3D Cursor. Go to Add, Mesh, then Plane. Tab into Edit Mode of the Plane, rotate it along the X axis about 90 degrees. Scale it along the X axis this way. You can press down Shift key for finer adjustments while scaling. You can see the X dimension is 51.7 cm. On Z dimension, set it to be 150 cm. Tab into edit mode of the plane, then select this top edge. Shift S, cursor to selected. Tab into object mode. Go to object, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. On this plane, add a horizontal loop cut here. Set number of cuts to be 100. Select this curve, Shift S, cursor to selected. Select the plane, Shift S, then selection to cursor. Add a curve modifier to the plane. Set the curve object to be the Bezier curve. As you can see the plane has disappeared, that is because I did not apply scale. Control A, apply scale. Add subdivision surface modifier to the plane. Reduce render levels to 1. Expand advanced, then enable keep corners. Right click and shade smooth on the plane. For clarity, I am going to disable wireframe. If the plane is intersecting with other objects in the scene, you select the curve and adjust its points while in edit mode. Add a solidify modifier to the plane. Go to object data properties of the plane, expand normals, then enable auto smooth. It's time to add an image texture to this plane. Tab into edit mode of the plane, then switch into front orthographic view. Toggle x-ray, select everything. U, then project from view. If you switch to UV editing workspace, you can see the UV map on this left side. 
I had already prepared an image texture for this. I will go to open, then select the image. You can see the UV map is not even close to what I need. I made a mistake when unwrapping the plane the first time. Once again, press U, then unwrap. On this left area, select these vertices, then adjust them this way. Before I continue, I would like to show you how I ended up with this image texture. That is because I did not create it from scratch. First step was going to freepick.com. Here I searched for landing page template. I got this Indian food website template collection and I liked it. Therefore I got a free download. The downloaded file needs to be extracted first. Here you can see a Photoshop document, that is what I needed. I opened the Photoshop file, and the first error I got was about missing fonts. Since I did not want to change anything in this artwork, I just saved it as a JPEG image right away. The next step was to create a new document. I had to make sure that the dimensions of the document are the same size as the plane in Blender. As you can see the X value is 51.7, while the Z value is 150 centimeters. Back to Photoshop, I made sure that the measurement is in centimeters, then adjusted the values as the plane in Blender. I brought in the JPEG image that I had saved earlier into the new Photoshop document, then adjusted it this way. I then saved this new document in the main folder where the Blender file is located. I also saved it as a JPEG image in order to be used in Blender. Now you have known how I ended up with this image texture, let's continue. Switch to Shading Workspace. Add a new material for the plane. Add an image texture, then connect color to base color. On the image texture, browse image to be linked and select the image. On the principled BSDF, set roughness to be 0.2. You can see this image texture is showing on the other side of the plane, that is not needed. Go to material properties of the plane. Add a new material slot, then select another material. Go to modifier properties. On the solidify modifier, expand materials, then set material offset and rim values to be 1. If you select the plane and move it along the z-axis you can see how it is moving along the bezier curve. But as you can see, the plane is going above the monitor. Go to add, mesh, then cube. Move it this way. Press S, then shift Z, to exclude the z-axis from scaling. Also scale the cube slightly along the x-axis this way. Then don't forget to apply scale. Select the plane, go to Modifier Properties, then add to it a Boolean modifier. Type should be Difference, set the object to be this cube. Select the cube, go to the Outliner and disable its visibility in Viewport and in Render. If you want to adjust the position of the cube, enable its visibility in Viewport and move it as you like. If you want to animate this effect, you just set keyframes on the Z location of the plane. 